So here's the problem, and let's move on to the solution. So what we're trying to find is the electric field inside the overlapping area here. So the first thing we need to do is to find the electric field of it, uh, inside of a sphere. So they actually tell you to use the result from problem 2.12. That's exactly what 2.12 does. It tells you what the electric field inside of a sphere is. So I'm just going to derive that result real quick. So we just use Gauss law, and this is only going to be equal to 1 over epsilon times the amount of charge enclosed, so 4 over 3 pi r to the power of 3 rho. And then you see the 4 pi's that cancel out, these r's that cancel out. So you're left with something like this. So the electric field is equal to something like this. So R is a unit vector, right? So we can actually write the electric field into something like this. So this R vector is the vector from the center of the sphere all the way to the point that we're trying to evaluate the electric field. And this is going to be inside of the sphere. This formula only works when you're inside of the sphere. So what can we do with this result that we just got? So we have this result. So how are we going to use this to solve problem 3.18? That's 2.18. So the thing is, we can see that this is essentially a configuration with two spheres. So we can just add, add up the separate comp contribution from both of these spheres. So it's just a principle of superposition. So, for the, so the total electric field is going to be equal to the electric field from the positive sphere plus the electric field from the negative sphere. So we can just do that. So for the positive sphere, it's going to be equal to this. So I'm going to use a special symbol here. This is eta, a Greek symbol. I know in the book they use uh, this weird uh, R-like symbol, so I don't like using this. So I like using eta. So this vector over here. So this is going to be the positive one. And then for the other side, there's going to be a negative one. So for the negative side, the charge density is negative rho. And then the vector is going to be something like this. So we can actually group these terms up so that you get something like this. And note that, just remember, these, both of these eta's are just arbitrary uh, vectors as long as they coincide with this as long as these point, point from the center to the overlapping area over here. So in this case, you can see that uh, we have uh, eta plus minus uh, eta minus. And that actually is equal to d, because if you check out the vectors here, you get a vector d that's defined like this. And then I've defined my eta plus and eta minus like this. So you see that d plus eta minus is equal to eta plus. So in that case, d is going to be equal to eta plus minus eta minus. So d is going to be the vector pointing from the positive sphere to the center of the negative sphere. And you see that this expression here is actually the same as this expression. So we find the surprising result that, as so I'll just give it an arrow to show that it's a vector. So we arrive at this surprising result that Inside of the sphere, in the overlapping area, the, the electric field is actually a constant. So the electric field within this area here is always constant. It's always pointing in the direction of D. So this is a surprising result. The electric field inside this overlapping area is actually a constant.